All right, hello, I am back, and uh, this is set three here, coming up of uh, MIT versus Yale in the Cotter Cup quarterfinals. Um, definitely has been an exciting series so far, I think. Uh, it's it's certainly been a little bit towards MIT side, though, I gotta say. Um, you know, July in the last game tried his best, uh, but couldn't destroy the uh, stalwart defenses of his opponent. Um, and in the first game, really, uh, Chi is just you know, a very smart but uh, very cheesy build from Stryker took out his opponent. So we're gonna see if um, a man called Dullahan can uh, hold up, uh, hold it, hold it up for Yale here in the third set. This is gonna be a Protoss versus Protoss on Colosseum Two, and uh, I'm excited about what's gonna happen here. Uh, so we've got here MIT's uh, Max playing in teal at the upper left, and we've got his opponent in green, um, Dullahan, playing for Yale. And, uh, of course, Yale needs this win, uh, otherwise... Um the game is going to be it. That's going to it's going to just be <laughs> uh, completely over for them. Um, and here we're, uh, we're going to actually change the colors a little bit. Uh, Dullahan is actually the red player now, and um, MIT is now the teal player. Uh, so let's see what happens on Coliseum Two. Um, it's it's going to be cross positions, which means that this could be a longer game, certainly. And uh, certainly it would be interesting to see a longer game, because both of these uh, earlier games have been very short. Zerg versus Zergs often are pretty short, but the first game, wow, uh, that was a fast rush. And uh, here we're seeing... Um, sorry, I'm getting the names confused, because the colors are a bit confusing, but uh, this is Dullahan from Yale, and uh, he's going to scout right after Pylon. He's actually going cross position, just to check up on these... Uh, Sneaky MIT kids, see if they did anything silly in the middle. And it uh, looks like we're not going to see any hacks here, any pranks from MIT. Um, we're going to instead, though, see Dullahan scout in the wrong direction. He's going to go to the bottom left. And uh looks like we've got Max uh, safely building his um, pylon in that anti manor pylon position. And he's going to get a gateway, of course, um, as will Yell. And uh, slightly slower scout coming out now for um, Max. Max is going to encounter Dullahan here in the middle. And uh, they're going to continue scouting. We've got a gas here coming from Max also. And uh, it seems right here we've got a gas coming from Dullahan. So uh, both players are going to go for um, one gate straight into gas. Um, we'll see if uh, any of them get a second pylon before the core. I do suspect that they will both go for core immediately. Um, you know, fast tech build opening here. And, uh, you know, on a big map like this, certainly not a bad build. I think uh, the main divergence points should come in the middle of the game. Who decides to go for an expansion, and uh, who decides to go for early reavers, or um, perhaps a, a three-gate goon or something like that. Of course, uh, you know, we could be seeing someone going for uh, DTs. Oh! A manor pylon being set down by Yale. Um, putting, uh, putting actually looks like two patches out of commission, um, or rather, uh, making it hard for them to mine, and, uh, it looks like he trapped one probe. Meanwhile, inside of his space, uh, he hasn't gotten mannered or anything, and, uh, he's got a core going up. Let's take a look at the timings here. Um, looks like we've got, a yeah, a zealot coming out for... MIT, MIT Max here, um, having to kill this pylon, and uh, it doesn't seem like he has a, a Cyber X core up yet, so uh, by doing this, he's managed to delay it a little bit, but Dullahan gets a manor pylon himself now, in return. Uh, notice, importantly, Dullahan uh, has built a zealot, yeah, there's a zealot, and he is going to try to pick off um, some probes, it does seem like the distance is a little bit too far, though, for that to have worked out. So if you see, we'll see if he manages to get anything with that. Oh, another mana pylon! MIT returning the favor in double, and uh, wow, looks like the, the zealots just passed one another. Um, I don't know if Max uh, knows that there's a zealot in his mineral lines, but uh, let's see what he decides to do. It looks like he's actually pulling back his uh, zealots from the minimap, but, uh, you know, Ka Dullahan having a little bit of trouble here with his zealot. Um, with <laughs> with the probe drills that are going on, he has gotten one kill, but um, I don't know if he'll be able to get another kill here. Uh, he's fighting the enemy zealot, which uh, isn't as great as idea. Uh, ooh, wow! So he gets one kill, and that's going to be it for him. Meanwhile, um, it looks like both of the manor pylons are still alive inside of uh, Dullahan's base. 
So I would say right now, Yale is slightly behind. As we can see, 19 food count, 23 food count for Max. Yeah, definitely. Max ahead right now. And uh, he's got a Dragoon coming out, um, killing off a uh, the neutral a sunken colony. Um, and uh, he's had, he has range moving in and no range yet for Max. So I'm sorry, for Delahan. So... Uh, Yale really far behind at this point in this game, um, just because of those manor pylons. Uh, his, I guess, just wasn't nearly as effective as the double, double manor, manor pylon coming from uh, Max, and you can really see how that makes a big difference in these games. We've got here um, a Zealot and a Goon for uh, Dullahan, and inside of Max's base we've also gotten the same uh, two units. He's also getting himself a second gateway. But really, I, I think he should know he's in the lead right now. Um, and we'll see how he uh, decides to play it from there on. If he decides to go for an expansion, solidify his economic lead, or to just try to win the game sooner. But it does look like both players are playing very conventional openings here, getting two-gate range. Um, definitely safe uh, pretty much for all seasons. Uh, and we're going to see a pylon here also. Uh, but it doesn't look like we're going to see any other tech. Nope, no other tech for... Um, Delahan just yet. And uh, meanwhile, Max is going to be putting a little pressure up. I think his uh, range is soon going to be done. And uh, we'll see if he's successful with this pressure here. Um, he's going to walk into some of this fire, though. Uh, and he's going to have to retreat. He doesn't have uh, you know, superiority in forces or anything. Yep, looks like both players just going to mass up a number of Dragoons here before thinking about anything else. So we'll see um, who decides to go for tech. It looks like uh, Delahan is the one to go for tech first. And uh, right now it seems like the, the economy, well, I mean, it does seem like MIT is still slightly in the lead by food count, 38 versus 33. Um, which means that they probably do have a couple more probes and, uh, you know, that means more units coming out soon too. However, uh, Protoss versus Protoss is a, a matchup that can swing very quickly depending on who wins a, a ground encounter. And it does seem like right now we're going to see MIT in trouble in this ground encounter. Nice micro coming from Dullahan, picking off one Dragoon without taking any hits, barely. And it uh, looks like he's going to manage to chase off this force, but he still has a superiority in numbers here. He could still continue to uh, fight and, and, and whittle down Max here. Um, Max right now... I don't know if he knows he's behind the unit count, but uh, he is going to bring two more goons here, and it does seem like Delahan is uh, rather content to just hold off the front here. Got a robotics facility, and um, let's see what uh, what he's going to get next. An observatory is what he's going to get next, and inside of um, MIT's base, we uh, oh my goodness, we don't care about MIT's base because uh, I thought this was like a probe here, but it's not just a probe. It is a proxy hidden Templar archives. Um, of course, the proxy location doesn't mean anything, but it is a, a hidden Templar archives. So uh, it's going to be sort of a late DT rush here for Max. Unfortunately for him, Dullahan is going to have uh, observers ready. And uh, this could be something that uh, really just gives the game away to Yale here, because I got to think Yale is going to be prepared for DT harassment. I mean, he's going to have observers, uh, and this late in the game, um, the, the DTs shouldn't be able to do too much. Of course, anything uh, is possible on the amateur level. We could be seeing one DT kill every single probe before uh, Yale notices, but of course that is uh, less than likely. Um, and of course, uh, these DTs are going to take a while even to cross the map, and the first observer should be out even before they uh, start crossing the map. So uh, this is really going to I think, put Dullahan way in the lead in this game. Um, he's also going to have Reavers, too. And uh, Templar really don't do very well against Reavers. Not much going for them in that aspect. Um, and I don't see a... Uh, let's see if there's a robotics facility. There's a robotics facility. It's much later, of course, uh, for MIT now. I mean, he will be able to get... Uh, you know, high Templar tech, should he decide to go for some kind of storm drop or some kind of silliness like that. But really, uh, this early in the game, that is, uh, you know, just uh, superfluous. Um, it really isn't as optimal as going for uh, Reavers and Observers are. So we got these DTs coming out. 
And let's hope that Dullahan has some observers. Looks like he's finally going to get an observer out. In fact, I think decided to build a shuttle before um, he built his first observer. But that's all right, because, uh, because of how late this uh, DT rush is, really, it's not going to do um, anything right now. DT advancing here. Um, well, it does seem like MIT is going to try to give this DT as much of a chance as possible by attacking in with all of his forces, but uh, now he realizes the bad news. Um, looks like both DTs go down to that nice concave position that, uh, that, that Delahan maintained. And Delahan, I think, knew about that, of course, um, and he's, he, should have a comfortable, uh, he, he should have a comfortable position right now. Um, he, he must be feeling pretty good, because he knows that... that uh, MIT Max had to go for DTs and uh, is now going to be uh, behind in terms of uh, everything else, unit count and tech. Um, and we should be seeing a pretty good Reaver harassment here, given that uh, MIT Max is still out in the middle of the map. He doesn't have observers yet either, so really there's not much um, forewarning he's going to have to these, uh, to these uh, Reavers that should be coming out pretty soon. And we've got the first Reaver coming out. Um, it's going to get loaded up. Meanwhile, uh, we're seeing Dullahan in the center of the map here. Um, he's going to put some pressure uh, up here against the Dragoon Force, force MIT Max to commit. And I don't think it's a good idea for MIT Max to uh, commit at this point. Um, he is behind in terms of unit count. And uh, right now we've got not too much going on. It seems that um, we're just waiting for the Reavers to drop and, and cause some uh, serious damage here. Uh, it's probably going to be quite bad for Max if, of course, Dullahan decides to, uh, to to drop the shoe, basically, and uh, and go for it, which I hope he does, you know. He managed to hold off the attack, and now it's time for the counterattack, especially because he's not expanding. Uh, but no, he's actually going to use the Reaver to fight with, uh, putting it right in front. It gets sniped off pretty quickly, though. I'm not sure if that was necessarily the best idea. He picks off the one observer that MIT Max has, though, and uh, MIT Max now forced on the retreat. Dullahan pressing up, um, even though I think the Reaver could have been better used in a harassment. Um, he has managed to pretty much uh, overwhelm the ground forces, and uh, he does have a healthy advantage here. Uh, although, Max is um, definitely trying to use the high ground. And he's going to uh, be able to supply from a much shorter supply line. Um, so he should be able to hold this off. Uh, on the other hand, maybe not. If, if Delahan goes right in, uh, he could be able to just finish him off at this point. He can't dither, though, and stand in this valley. This valley is not good for him. And uh, it looks like some zealots coming out, forcing uh, Delahan back a little bit. I still think he has more forces. Both players are slogging away at one another. And he is going to come out ahead again in this battle. So MIT Max here... Um, basically on the ropes, and Dullahan is uh, continuing to rally goons up, it seems. He should just break right in right now, and yeah, he has way too many units for uh, Max to be able to take care of at this point. Uh, Max, unfortunately, just unable to, uh, to convert from going for that DT rush into anything else that could save him. And uh, right now, Zealot's coming out. That's not going to do anything. GG, yo, coming from Max. And uh, we'll be putting uh, this stream on hold for a second as I uh, try to find the next replay. Thank you guys for watching. It is going to be 2-1 right now. Uh, MIT Yale.